This tutorial will demonstrate how a number of different foundation types may be quickly added to a bridge model using parametrically driven substructure components. We will show how to add the foundations to columns through the bent definitions. Five different types of foundations may be modeled, including isolated footings, combined footings, pile groups, pile piers, and pile shafts. We will start with the default quick bridge template. This model consists of a single bent with two columns, and the columns are fixed at the base. The foundation will be added at the base of this column. To create the foundations, we start by going to the Components menu and clicking on the Foundations command. Since no foundations have been previously defined, we will click on the Add New Foundations. On the Add Foundation property form, we have the option of adding a spring or an advanced foundation. The spring option allows us to specify a link or support property or a line or area spring where we can specify the stiffness in each of the six degrees of freedom. However, what we are interested in demonstrating is the advanced option. Here we have five options isolated footing, the combined footing, the pile group, the pile pier, and the pile shaft. For this tutorial, we will focus on the pile group foundation, but the defining of the parametric variables and the assignment of the foundations follows a similar approach for all of the foundation types. In addition, the geometry definitions for the isolated and combined footings are closely related to those specified for the pile cap of the pile group foundation. We will now define our pile group. On the form we have a diagram that identifies each of the parametric variables. The area below is where we can enter the values for each of the variables. Starting with the name for this pile group, and here we can specify anything we would like, and we will add example to pile group for pile group example. Next is the concrete material for the pile cap, where we can select from previously defined materials. In this case, our template has only one concrete defined, 4000 psi. Next is the total length and total width. We will come back to these values in a moment. We will leave the thickness set to the default of 42 inches. The overhang is the distance from the center of the outer pile to the edge of the pile cap. Mesh size controls how finely the pile cap should be meshed in the finite element model. Next, we move on to the piles themselves. Here we can select the material for the piles. Again, only 4000 psi concrete was previously defined. Next, we specify the number of piles in each direction. We will leave it set to 3. We can also specify the diameter of the piles and the length of the piles. Next is the spacing between piles in each direction, in this case 60 inches. Our piles will be straight and not battered, so we leave these angles set to zero. Lastly, under the pile group heading, we can specify a spring at the pile ends. 
this spring can have stiffness in all six degrees of freedom. For our model, we will set all restraints to free, except for translation in the vertical or Z direction. Here, based on the diameter of our pile, we will enter a value of 36 kips per inch. Additional vertical resistance in our piles will be provided by friction. The last data section is for the soil properties. The first item is the soil cover, the amount of soil over the top of the pile cap. This identifies where the top layer of the soil starts. Lastly is the definition of the soil layers. Any number of soil layers may be defined with the soil moduli and shear factors specified for each. Here the program has defaulted to five layers that in total reach to the bottom of the piles. The program uses these soil layers to automatically generate line springs along the length of the piles, both lateral compression only springs and vertical springs to account for friction are generated. Values for the springs are determined based on the discretization of the soil layers. The lateral compression only springs have a value equal to the soil moduli times the pile diameter. While the vertical friction springs are equal to the soil moduli times the shear factor times the pile circumference. If the pile depth exceeds the depth of the soil layers defined, the program will use the soil values from the last layer as though the last layer extends to the end of the pile. Returning to the values for total length and total width of the pile cap, note that these items are grayed out. That is because these values are determined from other parameters, namely the number of piles, the spacing of the piles, and the overhang. Thus, for our example, we have an overhang of 20, a spacing of 60, another spacing of 60, and an overhang of 20 for a total of 160 inches. The last area on the form is the model 3D display. Here we see a 3D representation of the foundation based on the parameters we have specified. We are going to adjust the colors to make it easier to identify the components. We will set the column to blue and the footing or pile cap to green. We have now completed defining the foundation and can proceed to the next step of adding it to our model. We add it to the model via the bent component. When we add the foundation in this manner, the assembly of objects making up the foundation become part of the bridge object. On the bridge data form, we click on the Modify Show Column Data button. In the Column Data area, under the Foundation header, we can change the default fixed to the foundation we just defined, Pile Group Example. We will change the foundation on just one column, column 2, 
for the sake of comparison. Because we had the auto update feature turned on, the model was automatically updated with our new pile group foundation. Exactly how is our pile group foundation modeled in CSI Bridge? Let's start by taking a look at the physical model. We have the column, the pile cap, and the piles. The analysis model looks like this, a column consisting of a frame object, the pile cap modeled with area objects, and the piles again modeled with frame objects. So exactly where are the area objects positioned relative to the physical location of the pile cap? They are located at the mid-depth of the pile cap. So if the area objects are at mid-depth, how is the column connected to it? It is connected with an end length offset that has a rigid zone factor equal to 0.5. This means that half of the length of this end offset is considered rigid. This is to account for the increased stiffness provided by the pile cap. Note also that the foundation will be aligned with the orientation of the bent. If the bent is skewed, the foundation will be skewed with it. If we zoom in, and right-click on the area objects generated to model the pile cap, we see that the program has given the section a default name of T42 because it is 42 inches thick. It has also assigned it a type of thin shell. If we double-click on T42 and then click the Modify Show Section button, we see that the shell is indeed 42 inches thick with a type of thin shell. As a final step, we will run the analysis so that we can take a look at the soil springs generated. Now we can see all of the green line springs that have been added to the piles. Switching to an undeformed shape view, we will now verify the values for some of the soil springs generated. We will right click on the last segment of one of the piles. Scrolling down to the line springs data, we see that three spring definitions have been created. Two in the 2, 3 or horizontal plane for the X and Y directions and one in the vertical direction. Previously in the tutorial we stated that the lateral compression only springs have a value equal to the soil moduli times the pile diameter. If we look at the soil layers we see that the last layer has a soil moduli of 0 0.1333 kips per inch cubed and with a pile diameter of 20 inches that should give us a lateral line spring value of 2.667 kips per inch per inch of pile, which is the value shown. For the vertical line springs used to model soil friction, the value should be equal to the soil moduli times the shear factor times the pile circumference. Again, the last layer has a soil moduli of 0 0.1333 with a shear factor of 0.1 and thus with a pile circumference of 62.832 inches for a 20 inch pile. That should give us a vertical line spring value of 0 0.8378 kips per inch per inch of pile which is the value shown. This concludes this tutorial 
on how to quickly add parametrically defined foundations to CSI bridge models using foundation components.